This is part two of the Sequitron test drive. We left part one with the Sequitron installed and running in live mode. All keys are playable except the command key. And this is the normal state for the program. To do anything else needs a command sequence. Now if this sounds scary, it's really no harder than learning to play a chord or fretting strings on a guitar. Once you've mastered the technique, you can control everything on the Sequitron, from recording to playback to multi-tracking, even saving and loading MIDI files. And all this while you're playing live using the same keys on the same music keyboard. Now this takes longer to describe than to do, so let's do it first and discuss it later. We'll use the play command as an example. And we can use the fact that the factory settings have already preloaded sequence one with a pattern. It's only a boring one bar metronome pattern, but it will do. So let's start the sequence playing in a continuous cycle or loop. We press the command key, press sequence one, press play. We're done. The sequence is now looping and the keys are back in live mode. Let's use the stop command. Press the command key, sequence one, stop. So what exactly is a command sequence? Well, there are four steps. Step one is to switch to command mode by pressing the command key. As you can see from the template, the keys now operate as command functions. The main status also shows this on the command line here. Step two is optional, depending on the command, and is where you select which sequences are to be affected by the command. These are the sequence select keys, and they act as toggles. I can select more than one. Selected sequences are highlighted both here in the template and on the main status screen. Step three is to press the actual command required. There are only a few commands shown in novice mode, but we'll see more later on. Step four is also optional, depending on the command. If it needs further data, the keyboard switches to value mode, where the keys now function as the relevant value, such as numbers or note lengths. We didn't need this step for the play and stop commands. At any stage, we can press escape to cancel the command. And that's it. Once the command is complete, the keyboard flips back to live mode automatically so you can carry on playing. Now these steps are the same for every command in the Sequitron. We'll look at more commands later, including the all important record command, which is here. But by now you're probably asking why or what the heck so maybe time for some background. All the sequencer programs I used to play with focused on the tail end of the creative process, such as editing and audio processing. Now there's nothing wrong with that, they're fantastic at this. But although they added more and more features over the years, they never seemed to address the front end. And besides that, I found switching to and from a computer was very distracting and took away all spontaneity. And this isn't to mention basic logistics. You've got your music keyboard in front of you, so where do you put your mouse and its mouse mat and the QWERTY keyboard? Or maybe it's just me. Either way, I thought something different was needed. And if computers were the problem, then why not use the item most familiar to the keyboard player, the music keyboard itself? So this meant first designing a command sequence around a music keyboard and only then adding a computer screen, or a GUI, for configuration and feedback. So the Sequitron is built from the ground up as a front-end tool, an ideas machine if you like, deliberately keeping the computer away from the musician. A bit like a guitar you just pick up and play, trying out chord sequences or melodies or riffs, or just generally having fun with music. And if something inspiring does crop up, 
you just copy it to one of those other programs to do the tail end bits and turn it into a full production. OK, you say, isn't it a bit cumbersome in practice? Well, one thing that doesn't come across with the virtual keyboard is that you do not have to release a key before pressing the next. It's the order of steps which are important. We'll come on to real keyboards later, but if you've jumped ahead and are using one now, you'll see it makes a huge difference. The four steps are almost like playing a rolling chord. Now there will be a small interruption to your live playing while you're in command mode, but this is designed to be as small as possible. The keyboard always returns to live mode at the earliest opportunity, even if the command hasn't taken effect yet. Now we can demonstrate this if we try stopping a sequence partway through its cycle. I'll slow the tempo down to make this clearer, and because we've not covered the tempo command yet, I'll do it from the configuration screen. So we'll click stop, and we're back in configuration mode, and here's the tempo drop down box. Let's go right down to 40. Back to run mode. Right, we'll start the sequence playing. Command, sequence one, play. And now I'll prepare to stop. And I'll press the stop key at the beginning. Now, I can still play the keyboard and the sequence is coming to an end on its own. Another point we'll cover later is that the command layout, or key mapping, is fully customizable. The default mapping here is just my personal preference. I'm right-handed, so I like the command key at the left of the keyboard, so I can press it with my little finger, and the sequence select keys, and the play, mute, stop, record, they're all in a convenient position, so I can span with one hand. Now you may prefer a different layout, say just using the white keys, or maybe some commands at the bottom, some at the top, and we'll cover the key mapping later on. So although you may not believe it now, but with a real keyboard and a bit of practice, you can enter a command in a split second. And don't forget your hands don't need to move anywhere else. They are on the same keyboard you are using to play live, so there's no reaching for a mouse or navigating menus. OK, well, that's it for part two. Apologies for all talk and little action in this one, but it was important to clarify exactly what the Secretron is all about. And if it's all about spontaneity, then we'd better look at recording next. So thanks for watching and see you in part three.